right. We're onto the final stretch now. The last thing I'm going to change is our wind main. Here we're going to implement the clock and we're going to call our update method from the class C app. I'm not implement the clock. I'm going to create an instance of the clock. So, uh, and I've chosen to do it here. Um, doesn't really matter where you call this constructor. It doesn't rely on anything. So I create a new instance of a clock called my clock and then straight away I'm just going to call the initialize method alright the next thing I'm going to do is change our while loop a little bit because if you remember here, while get message. Now this while loop will execute as long as we can receive messages from our window. Now what that essentially means is if there's no messages being received, this won't execute. So if we don't move the mouse over the window or anything, everything will just stop. Okay? probably show you that happening actually. I'll show you that happening and I'll leave this for now and then we'll change it later. And then you'll see what I mean. Right. So if I leave that the first thing I'm gonna do in update is is sorry, the first thing I'm gonna do is call update of the clock. So this will update the clock and the parameter we, uh, the, uh, the uh, variable that we'll receive called dt from the clock will be the amount of seconds since this was last updated so essentially it will go down this loop here get to the end come back up to the top of the while loop get a new value for dt which will be the amount of time since we were last at this section of the loop and then I'm just going to actually call update of our C app class on my app instance. I've said if failed, even though we don't return e fail, we might choose to in the future. So I'm just going to write it now for good uh, good measures and stuff. Just call update pass dt into it like that. If it fails, fails. We should really break here. There we go. And I think that's it. What we should actually do is probably delete my clock as well. If anything fails, because we all like to be good coders. Delete my clock there. Is there anywhere else? Yeah, we'll do it here as well. Right. Now then. If you notice we haven't changed this because I thought I'd just show you what happens. So if we run it and hope I don't get any compile errors. Just building now. Oh, we got compile errors. What's the problem? Fourteen seems to be a problem. Oh yeah, got to change that. Try it again. Okay, build succeeded this time. Right. Look, right. It's halfway through its rotation, but I've moved the cam. Uh, moved the. Uh, I have moved the uh, cursor off the window so there's no messages being sent at the moment. Which is not what we want, we just want this to animate no matter where the cursor is. So if I put it back on, there you go, it's moving 
also notice that the actual shape disappears when we sit when we view the back side of the shape. Now DirectX is very particular about front and back faces and when you declare a select a, set, a few vertices to make up a shape we only declare the front face of an object even if it's 2D like this triangle now there is a quick workaround which I'll show you in a second but the main thing I want to say to take in from this is that if you move it, the cursor off look it stops and that's not what we want, we want it to keep going so go back to win main we need to change this because we don't want to say well I'll get a message anymore we just want to say say this if the message part of this message struct is not equal to WM quit in other words the program's not just about to quit we'll keep going right? now in order for this to work properly I've found that we need to zero the memory as well so we'll just we'll, we'll declare this and then we'll zero the memory of it and then if it's not equal to WM quit then we will keep going so instead of saying if we're not getting messages if we, as long as we're getting messages we'll keep going we're going to say as long as we're not quitting will keep going and then if you notice now we have nowhere to actually receive our messages in our while loop and what I'm going to do is declare this here and what this is is a peak message call this is Win Windows programming again now if I read the comment it peek into message queue and retrieve any if they exist so basically we're just going to peek into our message queue with peek message and populate our message if there's a message there you might notice this is, this is actually faster than the original implementation because we're just going to ignore it if there isn't a message while the get message before would always execute as long as there's messages okay so now if we compile this and we get no compile errors which we didn't notice how even though my cursor is on and off the screen it's still rotating and that's exactly what we want and now to solve this back face problem because it currently only renders the front face of the triangle which is not what we want really I mean if we were having a very complex shape and we couldn't see into the shape it is, is what we want because it was it would be much quicker you know uh, it effectively cuts the rendering time in half if we only render the front siding faces which is why it's like that by default but for our for our scene it's very simple and we just want to render both sides <coughs> so it's very quick just one line of code and I'll just get that now if we go back to app.cpp we just need to call this line of code once and I'll do it here because it's another set render state call set it with our device and the enums here are d3d render state cool mode and d3d cool none which essentially means we're not going to cool or we're not going to miss out any faces front and back okay so we're going to render the front and back face now so if you run that There you go. You've got a nice rotating triangle there. We're getting there. <laughs> we really are. Alright. 